Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. My name is Christian and today is Tuesday, the best day of the week. Um, I am talking to you from the beautiful Italian city of Torino and I know that we haven't spoken in a while, but it's not you, it's me. <laughs> um, I, I've missed you all a lot and I've come back today because I want to talk to you about your learning progress in 2020. Because maybe for some of you, you have decided that 2020, you know, this is the year that you're going to succeed at, at you know, at learning English. This is the year you're going to maybe change your mindset or have that first conversation or maybe do that business deal you know whatever it is that you want to do this is the year and you know now we're in March so it's the third month right the third month and I want to know how it's going how's it going so far right um, I know that that you know the process of learning English is for life you know, it's like getting a dog, it's not just for Christmas, it's for life, I know that, but sometimes it's nice, it's nice to stop and say, okay, um, how am I going, you know, how am I progressing, and I want to talk to you about some really interesting research about how to plan what you're going to learn. It's an interesting question, a philosophical question, right? So. When you go into class, or when you open your app for learning English, or when you go into your subscription website, or open your textbook, whatever it is that you do, when you do that, how do you decide what to learn? Right? So, if you have a textbook, then you don't really decide. Okay, that's one of the problems with, with textbooks. You don't decide. Someone in an office somewhere decides what you should learn, okay? Um, you know, if you're in an app, it's kind of similar. You have this, like, line linear progression. You know, you learn this, then you learn this, and then at the end you get your certificate, right? Okay. Um, but if, if you're, if you're self-studying, then you need to know where do you begin? How do you know what to learn or what not to learn? Or even if you go to class with a teacher, how do you know what to do when you're in class? Because, you know, I think that if you're, if you're paying for a class with a teacher, then you should decide what you learn in class, right? You, you need to take some control. Um, that's really important. And, and a good teacher, before you have even one class, they'll ask you, what, what do you need English for? What are you interested in? Um, and then let's make a plan for you, personal plan for you. Really, really important. Um, so, but, but here's the question, what do we, what, what, how do we know what to learn? And the answer is really simple. It's, it's an instinct. You already have this instinct inside you that tells you exactly what you should learn. And that's not just my opinion, that was actually proven, okay, it's proven by this, this group of researchers, Sophie Bridges, Julian Jara Ettinger and Haiwan Gweon, okay, they did this really, they did this really beautifully simple piece of research, okay, so they asked children to play with toys. Now, some of the toys were high cost and low reward, and some of the other toys were low cost and high reward. So, what, what does that mean? So, imagine if you have a toy with one button, one button, and when you press the button, something amazing happens. A light spins round, doo doo doo, and it plays music, okay? This would be a low cost, high reward toy, because it's easy to learn how to do it. The, the cost of learning is low, but the reward is high, because it's really exciting, right? Then, you have a high cost, low reward toy. So. A high cost toy has a lot of buttons, a big button, some small buttons, 
you have to press the buttons. You have to press the buttons in, in, in a specific combination, okay? And when you get the combination correct, then the only thing it does is play music. It goes beep, 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 beep. Okay, so the, the reward is low. High cost, low reward. Now, what they did was they, they asked these children, they're only between five and seven years old, okay, they're young children, and they asked them to play with the toys. And then when they played with the toys, they had to teach other children how to use the toys, right? And what did they discover? What did they discover? So, toys that were high reward, so toys that had, uh, you know, were really exciting, they spent more time playing with them and less time teaching them, okay? But toys that were low reward, like if it just played music, they would spend a lot more time teaching with them, right? Now, it shows, what this research does, it shows that children have an instinct for where to spend their time best, okay? Where to spend their time best. And so, if you're in English class, what you should be doing, okay, if you're in class or if you're learning on your own, what you should be doing is investing your time and your energy playing with things that are fun and are useful, right? So, for example, conversation is really useful. Conversation is the core of language, okay? Really useful, high reward skill. And actually, it's difficult, but it's low cost. It's low cost because it requires effort, but it's not like sitting down and memorizing stuff. It's low cost, high reward. You should be spending time playing with that. That's what children do. We have the instinct for that. You have the instinct for that. And high cost things like, for example, memorizing 50 words related to a subject that you're not interested in. Like, okay class, today we're gonna memorize 50 words about, um, about trams. 50 words about trams. I'm not interested in tramps. I don't need this. Or let's let's learn 10 different ways to say hello. I don't need that. I need one. Okay? For me, that's high cost, low reward. I have to put in a lot of energy to memorize these words and then I don't use them. So those things we should not we should not be teaching them. Okay? If you're in class, if you, have a, if you have a teacher, if you're self-studying, you know what's useful to you and what's not. And you know what is good for you. Only you know that. Only you know what you're going to do with your English, right? I don't know. You know. So, focus on those things. Follow your instincts. Please don't waste your time and energy on stuff that, it, it, you know, it might feel good, right? It feels good. You do a worksheet and you're like, yes, 95% correct, yes. Maybe that feels good, but it's not useful. And you have the instinct already that tells you that it's not useful. So trust it, right? And I think, I think what's really interesting about this, this work as well is that it shows that the force the force that drives this, okay, the, the one, I love these traps, the, the one part of human nature that has, has caused us to be evolved, right, to have technology and to have beautiful cities and the, the, the one human force behind all of this creativity and innovation is curiosity, right? Curiosity. The children learned how to activate these toys by playing with them, by saying, oh, how does this work? Oh, I do this, let me try this. Oh, let me do, okay, it's, it's human curiosity. And that's why I get so upset to see people sitting in a classroom 
and learning stuff that that just makes them feel dead inside okay learning should be fun learning a good teacher will activate your curiosity okay will promote your curiosity and you say what what does that word mean oh my god that's the same as this word in in my language and wow so in your culture you drink coffee without milk four times a day you must be Italian <laughs> <laughs> I've I've had so much caffeine in the past two days that uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna run ten kilometers for no reason. <laughs> um, so 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 th that's what I want for you. Okay, I want for you to be curious about language, be honest about what you need and don't need to learn, and then play. Play with the things that bring you real value. And please stop doing things that make you feel dead inside, okay? If, uh, if you want to read this, this paper, I recommend it because it actually answers kind of bigger questions about human evolution, about um, how, how, did, how do we learn as a species what to teach each other. So, all of this, you know, this learning, the philosophy of learning is, is a deep, you know, deep and profound thing. And, and that's why I love it. So, I am, um, I'm going to go now. And I'm going to leave you for a short moment with the beautiful sights and sounds of the Italian city of, of Torino. I'm Christian, this is Kangaroo English, and I'll see you in class.